Welcome to the Employee Safety Orientation Training Program. As a temporary staffing services employee, safe work practices must be a priority every day. The actions you take within your job responsibilities on a daily basis play a key role in helping you and your coworkers remain productive and safe from injury. This orientation has been prepared to review general safety rules and practices for accident prevention and provide you with information on what to do in case of an accident or injury. As you work through this training program, keep in mind that only employees who take the responsibility to work safely and observe their staffing company and client safe work practices will be assigned work. The guidelines discussed in this program are a condition of your continued employment. Failure to abide by these policies may result in termination of your job assignment or in reduction or complete elimination of any related benefits. Following this program, you will be required to take a short quiz, which reinforces the important elements of this training. As a temporary staffing services employee, you may be given work assignments under the supervision of various clients at any number of locations. Your compliance with the safety rules and job site safety practices associated with these assignments will ensure your safety and the safety of your coworkers. This team approach to accident prevention and safe work practices will help create a working environment that promotes safety and health and maintains the professionalism that you and our clients have the right to expect. It is very important that when you are working at an on-site client location, you only perform the job duties that have been approved by your staffing company representative. Any variance from these duties must be approved prior to you doing them. Many unnecessary injuries occur to temporary workers who have been asked by on-site clients to perform job duties outside the scope of their approved assignments. Examples of these tasks include operating forklifts, running machinery without proper training, or filling in for another worker while they do another activity. Contact your staffing company representative immediately if you are asked to perform duties other than those specified by your assignment. Accidents are defined as unplanned events that interrupt production of service resulting in bodily injury, property damage, or loss of time. 90% of accidents are caused by one of the following factors. Safety rule violations, deliberate acts that violate safety rules, and acts resulting from not knowing the safety rules. Some of the most common injuries that occur in the temporary staffing industry include exertion injuries, strains, amputations, fractures, cuts and abrasions. These injuries are often the result of being struck by falling objects, using improper lifting procedures, using improperly guarded machinery, and material handling accidents from metal items, boxes, barrels, and other containers. As a temporary employee, it is your responsibility to recognize unsafe conditions in the workplace and take preventative measures to avoid injury. Following workplace safety and health rules, using proper lifting and material handling practices, wearing appropriate personal protective equipment, recognizing slip, trip, and fall exposures, using hand and power tools correctly, and knowing emergency procedures are just a few of the defenses you can take to prevent injuries on the job. Preventing accidents takes a team. For the team to be successful, it is important for you to notify your on-site client supervisor and ask for instructions if you are unsure of any job task that you are asked to perform. Also be sure to notify your on-site client supervisor if you have questions, notice an unsafe condition, or if you observe another employee engaged in an unsafe act. Before beginning work at any client site, it is important to know the rules for working safely. Never take risks. The best approach to doing any job is the common sense safe way. Prior to arriving at the client's site, it is important for you to know the general safety rules that will be enforced on every job assignment. These include, horseplay is not permitted on the job site. Do not take any unnecessary chances or work under hazardous conditions, such as operating machinery that has missing guards or removing guards from machinery. Use of cell phones, including texting, is prohibited while operating vehicles while on the job. Smoking is not permitted anywhere on the job sites except in designated areas. Drinking alcoholic beverages prior to or during work hours is prohibited as well as the use of illegal drugs or prescription medication that may interfere with job tasks. 
always work at a speed that is consistent with safety. Keep yourself rested and in good physical condition to do your job. Use the handrails on stairs and other elevated places. Always inspect tools and equipment before use and report any defects or damage. Work clear of suspended loads. Obey warning signs and tags. Do not enter confined spaces, chambers, tanks, or other similar places that receive little ventilation unless it has been determined that it is safe for you to enter by your supervisor staffing company representative. In addition, operate only the machinery or equipment you have been authorized and trained to run safely. Remove jewelry such as rings, identification bracelets, necklaces, and so forth. And restrain long hair and loose clothing before performing any work that involves climbing, material handling, or operating mechanical equipment. Never reach over moving parts of machinery or equipment. Report to work in appropriate clothing suitable for the type of work you will be performing. Wear personal protective equipment as required. Common sense, health and sanitation rules must be observed for the welfare and consideration of other employees. Always turn off all types of mechanical equipment when it is not in use. Try not to work alone. However, if you must, tell someone where you are and how long you will be. Before leaving any job, be sure it is in a safe condition and keep in mind that all safety regulations will be strictly enforced. True or false? When working at an on-site client location, it is okay to accept jobs that are not within the scope of your approved duties, such as operating a forklift or spending a few seconds filling in for another employee on another job task. Now that you are aware of the general safety rules that will be enforced, let's take a look at some specific safety practices that apply to keeping you safe while working on job assignments. Exertion injuries from lifting, pushing, pulling, twisting, bending, and turning while handling materials resulted in approximately 30% of injuries in the workplace. Proper lifting techniques are critical to reducing your exposure to these types of injuries. Some of the factors that can cause serious back injuries when lifting improperly include twisting and turning too much during a lift, move, or transfer, lifting more than 40 to 45 pounds unassisted, reaching or stretching out of your work zone, and using an improper grip on the load you are moving. When lifting objects, body posture and positioning plays a key role. The safe lifting zone is an area within the body located between the mid-thigh and chest. Lifts should be made within the safe lifting zone whenever possible. In addition to lifting objects within the safe lifting zone, remember to always lift material using the strength of your legs and not your back. When lifting an object, always practice the following safe lifting techniques. Move in close to the load. Bend at your knees, not at your waist. Keep your back straight and avoid unnecessary twisting. Hold the load close to your body and lift the material using the strength of your legs, not your back. If the material weighs more than 40 to 45 pounds, do not lift it. Rather, use a mechanical aid such as a dolly or team lift with someone who is of equal strength. True or false? When lifting a load, keep it away from your body. It is important to know emergency exit routes and locations of fire alarms and fire extinguishers. If you discover a fire, pull the fire alarm, call 911, and evacuate the building. Be sure that you know the location of all fire extinguishers and that they are clearly marked and accessible for use. When using a fire extinguisher, use the pass method. Pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep across the base of the fire. In addition, smoking and open flames are not permitted where flammable solvents, liquids, fluids, gases, and other flammable materials are stored, transported, handled, or used. Do not use gasoline for cleaning purposes. Permits must be obtained for hot work such as welding, burning, and cutting operations. No burning, welding, or other source of ignition should be applied to any enclosed tank or vessel until it has first been determined that no possibility of explosion exists and authority for the work is obtained from the on-site supervisor. 
cleanse thoroughly after handling hazardous flammable substances, and follow special instructions for those products. Good housekeeping is a term that describes the practice of keeping the workplace neat and orderly, storing materials properly, Maintaining adequate space to move through or work in the area are all easy actions to take for preventing accidents. In addition, good housekeeping also allows for more efficient job performance on your part. Materials, tools, and equipment stored in an orderly manner are easy to find, less likely to become damaged, and quicker to utilize. To maintain good housekeeping in your work area, take the following actions. Maintain work areas and storage facilities that are clean, neat, and orderly. Keep all aisles, stairways, passageways, exits, and access ways to buildings free from obstructions at all times. Clean up all spills immediately. Return tools and equipment to their proper places when not in use. And lay out extension cords, air hoses, water hoses, ladders, pipes, tools, and so forth in a way that minimizes tripping hazards or obstructions to traffic. For many people, the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is a required part of every workday. PPE is designed to protect you from serious workplace injuries or illnesses. If it is not utilized properly, it will not be effective in keeping you safe. All employees must use required PPE. Ask your on-site client supervisor for specific instructions. Prior to beginning work each day, be sure you know what PPE is necessary to safely do your job. Let's take a look at some of the common types of PPE that you might be required to wear on work assignments. Safety glasses, face shields, and welding helmets are types of commonly used eye protection. Make sure your eye protection fits correctly. When you are done using your eye protection, be sure that you know how to maintain and store it. Foot injuries can be avoided with proper use of foot protection. Work boots with ankle support and leather shoes offer adequate protection from many of the hazards encountered in the workplace. Many work environments require the use of shoes or boots equipped with a steel toe. This helps to protect toes from becoming lacerated or crushed by materials or equipment in the workplace. The use of hearing protection is necessary for employees exposed to noise levels of 85 decibels or greater during an average 8-hour workday. Types of hearing protection include disposable earplugs, reusable earplugs, headband earplugs, and earmuffs. When the possibility of injury from falling or flying objects exists, Regulations developed by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, require the use of head protection. The most common type of head protection is the hard hat. A traditional hard hat is made up of an outer shell and a suspension system that is designed to protect the head from heavy blows or other trauma. Hand protection is another common type of PPE utilized at client sites. Gloves are designed to protect the hands from numerous hazards including lacerations, burns, punctures, caustic chemicals, and other types of injuries. Gloves can be made of leather, mesh, cotton, or rubber, and should be chosen depending on the job. Always take good care of your PPE after each use. If you are unsure of what PPE to use or how to wear it, notify your supervisor. In addition, report damaged or defective PPE to your supervisor immediately. Remember that all PPE must be approved by your supervisor and or your staffing company representative and meet all applicable standards. True or false? If you have a concern about the condition of your PPE, notify your on-site supervisor. The Hazard Communication Standard, or HAZCOM, was created by OSHA with the intent to protect you from accidental contact with chemicals. The standard provides you with the right to know about the chemicals you may encounter on the job and explains how to protect yourself from the hazards associated with these chemicals. Here are some good practices to follow when working with chemicals and hazardous materials. Use chemicals properly and only for what they are intended and do not mix incompatible chemicals. Use appropriate PPE. Know the location of the nearest eye wash and drench shower system prior to working with chemicals. Understand and use safety data sheets, SDSs. 
These sheets explain the hazards and precautions of the chemicals you work with and are available at each client work site. In addition, properly labeled containers with the identity of their contents and applicable hazard warnings. Practice good hygiene when using chemicals. Wash your hands often, before breaks, meals, and at the end of the day. Separate work from break and lunch areas. And remember that smoking is prohibited at client sites, especially when working with chemicals or solvents. Use only designated areas for smoking. True or false? Prior to using any chemical, be sure to read and understand the corresponding SDS. Do not use any vehicle for work purposes without written permission from your staffing company. Specific driver training will be provided if you are assigned to a client with fleet operations. We will provide you with training on basic driving principles and specific training will be covered by the on-site client. When using company vehicles, remember that cell phone use and texting are prohibited. Human blood and other bodily fluids are considered a hazard because of the risk of blood-borne pathogens, which are microscopic organisms present in blood and other bodily fluids that have the potential to cause disease. Hepatitis B, C, and the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, are all types of blood-borne pathogens. They can enter the body of another person through open wounds, the eyes, nose, and mouth, or from a puncture wound where a sharp instrument carrying a blood-borne pathogen penetrates your skin. If you encounter any of the substances that could present an exposure to a blood-borne pathogen, take the following steps immediately to protect yourself. Use personal protective equipment such as gloves and or goggles when anticipating contact with blood or bodily fluids. Treat all bodily fluids and soiled items as contaminated. Carefully handle the disposal of sharp instruments such as contaminated equipment or first aid items like needles, scissors and bandages during and after use. Practice good housekeeping by cleaning work surfaces with bleach and other disinfecting agents frequently and after any blood-borne pathogen exposure. Wash hands and skin surfaces immediately after any contact with blood or bodily fluids. If you have routine exposure to blood-borne pathogens or have encountered a blood-borne pathogen, be sure to get a hepatitis B vaccination. The majority of electrical accidents can be prevented. Only qualified personnel should perform repair work to electrical equipment. Remember the following simple precautions when working with electricity. Inspect equipment and cords for damage prior to use. Don't overload electrical outlets. Do not utilize or work with electrical equipment in damp or wet conditions or when water or puddles are present in the work area. And report any concerns you may have to your on-site supervisor. Lockout tagout is a safety procedure for de-energizing, disconnecting, and shutting down the power sources to equipment so that it can be maintained or repaired without hazard to the employees authorized to work on this type of equipment. When a power source is de-energized or shut down, a lock and tag are affixed to the equipment to ensure that it is not re-energized or started up until the repair work or maintenance is completed. Should you see equipment that is locked and tagged out, do not touch the lock, tag, equipment, or controls. Only qualified personnel should perform repair work to lock out, tag out equipment or reported deficiencies. One of the most common types of accidents at client sites is slip, trip, and fall accidents. Many slips, trips, and falls are caused by unsafe actions or work practices that can easily be corrected. To prevent a slip, trip, and fall accident, one of the most important actions you can take is to watch where you're going and slow down. Move at a steady pace and don't race down halls or around corners. Other preventative measures you can take include paying attention to walking surfaces and noting changes such as varying heights, floor textures, and the presence of curbs and so forth. Watching surfaces for the presence of water or ice. Making wide turns at corners. Wearing slip-resistant shoes when appropriate. Keeping your hands free for balance and out of your pockets. Making sure that you can see over the load you're carrying. And keeping work areas clean and free of clutter. In addition, when sitting in a chair, keep all chair legs on the floor at all times. 
Follow your client site safety rules regarding footwear and keep the bottoms of your shoes clean and in good condition. Clean up spills immediately and report any safety concerns to your supervisor. Weather conditions can also contribute to slip, trip, and fall injuries. Throughout the year, be cautious of water, ice, or snow that may be present in your work areas. Report these conditions to your on-site supervisor immediately so they can be removed. Another type of fall exposure that can be avoided is the incorrect use of ladders. To use a ladder safely, remember these precautions. Do not work on roofs or surfaces more than 8 feet in height unless you have received prior approval from your staffing company. Inspect the ladder before use by checking the rungs and handrails for tightness and cleanliness. Immediately report damage to ladders and other supporting structures to the on-site supervisor for repairs. Metal ladders should never be used in the vicinity of electrical circuits. Do not paint ladders and clean muddy or slippery shoes before climbing the ladder. Place the ladder on a firm, flat surface and be sure that the safety feet are secure. Place a straight ladder at a 75-degree angle or a 4 to 1 ratio. When climbing a ladder, always face it and never stand on the top two rungs of the ladder or allow your belt buckle to go past the side rails. Injuries to fingers and hands from using incorrect or worn hand and power tools are a common occurrence. Another safety concern when using power tools is the risk of particles flying into the eyes due to using defective tools or not wearing eye protection. To use hand and power tools safely, consider these safety practices. Select the right tool for the job and don't use other tools to substitute for the tool required by the job, such as using a screwdriver as a chisel. Always wear the correct PPE for the job, such as safety glasses or goggles, especially when using hammers, chisels, punches, and wedges. Check the handle and head of every tool for tightness and proper working condition before each use. Clean and return tools to their proper place so that they do not fall from a ledge or are in a location where they could cause a slip, trip, and fall injury. And report anything that may be wrong with the tool to your on-site supervisor so it can be repaired or replaced. Emergencies due to fire, severe weather, and national events can occur at any time. It is important to be prepared and know what to do should an emergency situation occur. Be aware of all evacuation routes, exits, assemblies, and shelter areas at your workplace. Take part in evacuation drills and training sessions related to emergency situations. Do not use elevators to evacuate. And remain in the designated area until authorities give the all-clear signal. Your staffing company and its clients are committed to providing and maintaining a safe work environment for all employees. However, even at the safest work sites, sometimes accidents occur. While on job assignments, it is very important to be aware of accident exposures and procedures. In the event you are involved in an on-the-job accident, you are required to follow all rules and regulations. Report any accident, injury, or near-miss that resulted from your job-related duties to your on-site client supervisor immediately and seek first aid. This includes minor injuries and near-misses, such as a cut finger that requires a band-aid. Also, if you strain a muscle while working but do not feel you need medical attention, be sure to immediately report the injury to your on-site supervisor anyway. After reporting this to your on-site supervisor, contact your staffing company office immediately by using office voicemail or pagers if available, no later than at the end of your work shift. Proper notification concerning any on-the-job injury is important to protect your right under workers' compensation legislation. This will help to ensure that you receive proper medical treatment and will expedite your return to work and protect others from suffering the same injury. All clients for which you may be working are aware of these procedures and will help you to follow this process. Please be aware that if you're involved in an accident or injury that requires a doctor's appointment or hospitalization, a representative from your staffing company may meet you at the physician's office or hospital. At that time, as with every accident and injury, the representative will begin a report and conduct an investigation of the accident. For your protection and care, it is important that you cooperate with this process.
Following an accident, you are required to submit to a drug screen. This screen is a routine part of our policies and procedures regarding on-the-job accidents and injuries. The drug screen is in compliance with our substance abuse program, and you have signed an authorization and consent form for this as part of your agreement of employment. In the event of an accident or injury, we will make certain that you receive the best medical treatment available and will help you return to work as quickly as possible. We have effective return to work, modified duty programs that will accommodate most restrictions or limitations to get you back to work. Making a false or fraudulent workers' compensation claim is a crime that can result in fines and or imprisonment and loss of eligibility to receive workers' compensation benefits. True or false? All injuries and near misses should be reported to your staffing company. Should you need medical aid while working on a job assignment, contact your on-site client supervisor immediately. Prior to beginning each on-site client assignment, discuss with your supervisor the procedure necessary for reporting first aid injuries or emergencies. Also be sure that you know the location of emergency first aid materials, including eyewash stations. 